In this video, we are going to use Gauss's law to show that the electric field due to a point charge is our um, usual kq over r squared, or in this case, kq over d squared, because I'm going to say we're distance d away. Uh, remember that k is the same as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, so we could also write it as q over 4 pi epsilon naught d squared. So we're going to derive this equation, Coulomb's law, from Gauss's law. First step, identify the symmetry of the charge distribution and draw the appropriate Gaussian surface. So this is spherical symmetry, which means our appropriate Gaussian surface is going to be the sphere that's concentric with the charge. So it's a concentric sphere. And we want to make sure that the Gaussian surface touches the location where we want to find the electric field. So it says we're going to find the electric field the distance d away. So there's my distance d. So my Gaussian sphere needs to be concentric with this and it needs to touch at distance d so it's going to have a radius of d. This is not a very good circle but we get the picture. There we go. There's our Gaussian sphere. I mean, this is in three dimensions so it's an entire sphere. On each face of your surface indicate the directions of E and dA. Well, sphere really only has one face. And the electric field at D points outwards. And it does so at all of those places along the sphere. And the electric field is the same value at every place along the sphere, right? Because of the spherical symmetry. And the area, vector dA, also points radially outwards, which means that dA and E are going to be parallel everywhere on the surface of the sphere. I'm just going to draw them here. But you get the idea, it's the same everywhere. And then everywhere along the whole, around the whole three-dimensional surface, the electric field is going to be poking through perpendicular to the imaginary circle, the imaginary sphere, everywhere. And all those E vectors and all those DA vectors are all going to be parallel to each other everywhere. So everywhere along the surface of the sphere, we're going to have a flux. So step one is done, step two is done. Calculate Q enclosed, the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. That's easy. Q enclosed is just Q. Calculate the net flux through all faces of our Gaussian surface. Well, this is a sphere. It only has one face. So the flux is going to be the electric field times the surface area of the sphere. And the surface area of a sphere is pi, uh, 4 pi d squared, right? Because our Gaussian, it's our, the surface area of our Gaussian cylinder, a uh, surface, a Gaussian sphere, sorry. And our sphere has a radius of d. So 4 pi d squared. And if you forget the area for the surface area of a sphere, and you get it confused with the volume of a sphere, on your AP reference tables, it has all those area and volume equations, so you shouldn't have to mix those up. Then for the final step, we're going to equate our flux with Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So our flux, which we found just before, is e times 4 pi t squared 
and our Q enclosed is Q over epsilon naught. Now we just have to rearrange and solve for E. Nothing cancels out. Left with Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught times d squared, which is the same thing as kq over d squared, right? Because k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And that is exactly what we knew we were going to get. It's our old buddy right there kq over d squared. And we figured it out using Gauss's law. Hope that makes sense.